When you search online for answers of how to win her back after she asks for space and has fallen out of love, you'll get thousands of different answers, leaving you confused. I mean, some say you need to create more space to get her chasing you. You need to ignore her, bro. Every time you're talking to a girl and she seems distant, she's taking a long time to reply to your text or she's giving a vague excuse about why she can't hang out, you need to ignore her. Others will say that you should never show any emotions ever at all. If you ever show any vulnerability to your woman ever, she'll leave you. Yeah. And some will even worse tell you this. Warning. If the topic of psychological manipulation and emotional enslavement of women offends you, I want you to stop watching this video. What the fuck? So it's time to cut through all the BS and show you what none of these people mention. I guarantee there is a less than 0.01% of you that have truly mastered this concept to win her back in your arms again, what I'm gonna go over today. And I'm not pretending that doing this thing alone will get her back, but without it, nothing else you do will work. It's equivalent to building your own car, but never installing the engine. Without it, you'll go nowhere, constantly spinning your wheels. You'll be wondering why she even left you in the first place, sitting there with absolute heartache. However, this blueprint today will fast track you on the right path to say the right words, to melt that wall of ice that's been holding you back from connecting with her. And at the end of this video, I will show you a proven path to win her back after you master this skill to make her fall back in love. Let's talk about Julian. When you look at him, you think that he had it all. A successful career, a gorgeous wife, and a zest for life. Like the time they took up salsa dancing and progressed to the level of advanced. But you never guess behind closed doors. His marriage was in shambles and she would do the unthinkable. You see, Julian and his wife were a power couple. When they weren't rocking successful careers, she practiced yoga and he coached soccer and ultimate frisbee. And that's what she loved about him, his desire to take care of himself and help others do the same in the process. Everyone felt comfortable around him because of just how nice he was. The thing is, his athletic assertiveness was countered by a painfully nice demeanor at home. You see, Julian loved his wife more than anything. Since the day they met, he would give his devotion to every aspect of their relationship. But he wanted to please her so much that he often avoided conflict. For example, if he ever made plans of his own, but his wife brought up a different idea, Julian would immediately change what he wanted to do just to make her happy. He also let her make most of the day-to-day -day decisions, thinking that's what she wanted. This extended into the kitchen, having his wife always pick what to eat for dinner. She'd say, what do you feel like? And he'd respond with, I'm not sure, I'm easy, what do you want? And this also extended into the family room for what movies and shows to watch. So of course, when it came to the bedroom, his wife also got to choose when they made love. If he didn't lead in the other rooms, why would he lead there? Day after day after day until there were no more days left. When she'd voice her opinion on something 99% of the time, no joke, no exaggeration, he would agree, offering little in the way of challenging her. Now, why did Julian do this? Because to him, challenge meant conflict and conflict meant disapproval. Now, after a while, she'd show signs of frustration over these little monotonous exchanges. He'd get defensive, especially if he was tired from an active day, saying, why are you always trying to pick a fight with me? And then of course she'd lash back saying, I'm not, quit being so defensive. And suddenly it became a fiery war of words. Clear resentment had sunk their teeth into both of them, but their intimacy also took a back seat. She was never in the mood to have sex, which made Julian feel even more disconnected and underappreciated. At night, when he tried to engage with her in foreplay, she'd turn over saying how tired she was, the headache, whatever excuse you guys have all heard. He'd reply, it's all good, I'm tired too, and then rub her back a little bit. It was sad. Sometimes she'd thank him for the nice gesture, but say it was keeping her awake when she needed to get sleep. So there he lied, brokenhearted, wondering how he got here. I mean, their intimacy was the bedrock of their relationship in the beginning. And however, things even took a worse turn. You see, she started to go out more at night, dancing with friends and making new friends that were single. He was happy at first because her mood was brighter, which made life easier. But when late nights became a routine thing, he started to wonder if there was more going on. He had this sixth sense that he just couldn't explain. And they hadn't done it in months. And it felt like they were just roommates, just going through the motions day by day, two passing ships in the night. She was constantly protective of her phone too. And he'd lay awake at night, fuming with jealousy at the thought of another man in the picture. Finally, one night it took a turning point where it changed the relationship forever. When she went down to the lobby of their condo to check the mail, she left her phone unlocked with her text messages open, maybe subconsciously doing it on purpose in a moment of weakness, but let's face it, he knew there was no way on earth he could resist. He picked up the phone 
and scrolled through her messages while his heart was racing, knowing what he was doing was not good. Now, at first, nothing was out of the ordinary, mostly conversations with her girlfriends, except for one girl named Christine, where the last text from her was, I want you so badly. Scanning their conversation in quick detail as his heart raced a million miles per minute, he got the clear impression that Christine was a fake name for another guy. Julian couldn't believe what he saw. His body immediately started to shake and a coldness swept over him. He's never felt that way before. It was shock. And that's when he realized that this Christine was someone more than that. There was multiple meetups and flirty text messages. It was going on for months. His worst fear was true. He went to put the phone back, but right at the last moment, she walked into the door and he was caught holding it. A look of even more panic swept over his face. He turned into a ghost and he asked. He couldn't, he couldn't help it. The words just came out. So who was Christine? She instantly got annoyed and moved quickly to grab her phone from his hands. She's a friend, what the fuck? And snatched the device back from him. He said, yeah, it doesn't sound like it. I read the conversation. And that's when all hell broke loose and she came clean about the affair. But the words that followed were even worse. I'm no longer in love with you. Julian didn't think he could feel worse, but he was torn apart. How could his wife betray him like this? What did he do to deserve this? What did he do? All these thoughts flooded over him like a tsunami, destroying the very fabric of the marriage. He thought was unshakable. Julian would lay awake at night with his eyes wide open, wondering, is she thinking about this guy right now? Is she dreaming of their next date with excitement? The same excitement that she used to feel for him. He was desperate for answers. Anything to wake up from his nightmare. Repeated searches online brought him to our team. And I'm so glad that I found him, as I was able to show him exactly how he got to where he was, the reasons behind his wife's actions, and how to change the outcome. It was as if he had his own personal carpet ripped out, revealing mold and mildew underneath. There was work that needed to be done a lot, but we were able to do it together with our team and everyone involved in the program. And let me tell you this, Julian got the results he wanted. He started detaching from the needy behavior that caused him to get to where he was with his wife, started taking the lead more at home. And as hard as it was, he took his focus off the other guy and eradicated his feelings of jealousy. This radical focus on himself, all the inner work I helped him do, transformed it into a high value version of himself. In a matter of weeks, his wife's demeanor around him started to change. She started to open up to him again and really reveal all this pain that was there that she never really showed before. She was no longer cold and distant because she expelled all this energy that was causing the resentment. She started doing nice things for him like folding his clothes again, packing lunch for work, wanting to just hang out with him. They even exchanged some flirty banter from time to time. But the real kicker followed shortly after that because he established his values and set his boundaries and she eventually dropped the other guy. Her attraction for her husband was reignited. All right, so check this out. For the guys who are extremely needy and their wife starts to pull away, they will start to chase. Now, I know these are blue and red, but they're both negatively charged magnets. This is you or Julian. This is your wife. Watch what happens when you chase, right? You chase, she runs, okay? Now, if we flip this and make it more of a positively charged masculine magnet, which I'm gonna go ahead and replace this, and you increase your dominance and your testosterone and all these positive traits I'm gonna tell you with these habits in a second, what you'll get is essentially this. You'll be in your masculine state, right? You'll be sitting here and in proximity, watch what will happen, right? She will come to you with full force. And this is a very positively charged magnet. It is insanely powerful. And I don't care if you're just in your state, you don't even have to chase her, right? You'll just be in proximity to her and it brings her in every single time. Okay, so now that you guys have a clear understanding about how this relates to a story with a client, how this relates to the beautiful metaphor I outlined for you, I'm gonna give you, for those who are empirically inclined, some scientific backing to make a logical conclusion with all this. Not that you need it, but here we go. So as you can see here, there's a study done with four experiments showing that dominance and heterosexual attraction. I'm just gonna skip to the main points. If you guys wanna read the study, the link will be down below if you guys wanna fact check this. But right here in the general discussion, you'll see the results of the four experiments supported the prediction that dominance behavior would selectively increase the sexual attractiveness of males. No support was found for the notion of female attractiveness. It seems straightforward, but dominance is essentially a protective trait. And if we were evolving where a lot of these emotions come from with attraction and why she responds to you the way she does, when you were a dominant male, you were able to protect her and keep her safe. That sense of safety allows her to feel more to her feminine and you're into more to your masculine, which causes her to be attracted. And let me show you, before I go into the ways to increase dominance, to increase attraction, to increase testosterone, now there are five unique ways that you can get an immediate shift in your dominance so she can start perceiving you differently, feel differently, and open up towards you. Now I'm gonna cover the first two, 
that are really obvious. As the, we go more and more, they're gonna get deeper and deeper. And the fifth one, I guarantee you've never heard of. So the first one is sleep. Sleep is the one thing that I struggle with the most, and I guarantee you are being underslept. A lot of guys think they can go on you know, six, five hours of sleep and they're fine. They just chug a bunch of coffee or whatever the case may be, or just power through it. But man, if you have a lack of sleep, you're not only not recovering your body, but you are just more lethargic, you're irritable, and you're in this low status state. Try getting a great night's sleep and tracking it. Your life will change. I am not even kidding. The next is your diet. Now, these are going to start off simple. Look, a lot of people, they don't eat whole foods. They don't eat enough protein. They don't, they eat a lot of, you know what sugar is in the American diet? Sugar slows you down, makes you lethargic, and you're just in this passive state. Your diet affects the way you think and how you interact in the world. So if that is not on tip top shape, if you're eating crappy food, drinking beer all the time, whatever the case may be, it is affecting you more than you think. The next one is your purpose. Now, I've done whole videos on purpose, and if you want me to do more on the channel, let me know in the comments down below. But most men that I work with, they've climbed their purpose. They hit that top of that mountain and they're like, yeah, I made it. I, I got my career, things are good, but they don't have something driving them. I recently came out with a video where I said the quote, a woman would rather have a man on the climb than the man who's reached the top of the mountain. The man that has ambition, who is not complacent, that is going towards somewhere in life, who is driven, who is the leader, it's gonna take her on an adventure. And that's what she craves, whether she overtly tells you or not. You have to have that new mission. If you got to a place in your career, I don't care if you're 70 years old watching me talk about this. You do not stop having a purpose in life until the day you go down beneath the earth into heaven or whatever the case may be, okay? So find that purpose, start doing new things, and you see that your even your dopamine levels will start to increase because of how much extra motivation and discipline and now dominance that you have because you're feeling more confident in the new area of life and they have that zest in your life as well. The next habit you should do to increase your dominance is to have discipline in your life. Now, what does discipline look like? Look, you should be having goals in your life other than your career and your family. Goals you are setting for yourself. And when you set goals, you're going to have obstacles along the way. That is part of the path, right? Things that are to overcome to help you become a better man. And you're gonna need discipline to say no to certain things. All right, we already talked about the diet, we already talked about the sleep, but just discipline and whole to achieve your goals is necessary. And I know how driven you are right now because of what's going on in your life and you want her back and you found this new passion from a place of anxiety, but you need to keep that passion going and develop that discipline because that discipline is gonna carry you forward in those dark times to make you become the man that does get her back. If you fall off and you become lazy, you become complacent again, you fail her test, you give up, you lose hope, that is fear winning. That is the devil whispering in your ear saying that you can't do it. Now I can actually do five more, but I'm just gonna do the most important one that I found over the years. The best way to increase your dominance, to have that polar magnetic attraction toward it and becoming your authentic masculine state comes from a phrase that iron sharpens iron. A lot of men that we work with, maybe you're military or you're in a fraternity or you're in sports, when you're around other men, they're on the same path as you, on the same transformational journey. Not only do they challenge you on an emotional level, verbally, but just being in the presence of other men, all that testosterone, right? It just develops you and it, it shaves off these like weak parts of you. I can't tell you how many times I will see a guy post in our group, our private group, Brotherhood, and you have like 10 guys commenting on all these limiting beliefs that he's having that he would not, they are blind spots to him. Think of how fast you grow when you're able to have all these other guys point out these weaknesses in you where you're becoming complacent. It's that added accountability. If that's something that you need, if you've sacrificed so much, you've invested everything into your family, everything into being a good father, I love that about you. I truly do. That's how my father was. And that's how my tendencies are. I think in our society, that's how men are, that we can alienate other friends, alienate ourselves, but you need to be around another tribe of men. Now, you can do that in other areas in your community. You can find different groups. If you want a community that is gonna push you, that has other experts in there, that has me in there, what you can do right now is you can set up a call down below. It is free, but at the same time, it does cost something, not financially. What it costs is I want you to be emotionally committed. And I want you to say to yourself that you want to change, okay? And obviously, if we think you're a good fit for our program, we will offer you the program, which there is a financial investment in that, okay? I mean, I want to be completely clear with you guys that this call down below by clicking the link is an evaluation. An evaluation to see, based on your situation, can we help you, okay? If we can, and you're able to invest fully into yourself, into this, to become a better man, to get her back, then, what we can do is that we can invite you into the program, okay? So if you're ready to take that next step, something that's been hard tested for over a decade of my life where I recognize that therapy wasn't doing it for men, that we are falling by the wayside and that we need to step up. This is why I'm doing this. I know it's about winning her back, but it's also more than that, okay?
If what I'm saying speaks to you in your heart, click the link down below. Get on a call with our team. We'll help you out. See you in the next video.